Psalms, the second chapter, verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me. And then going on to verse 8, notice what he said in verse 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This parallels what Jesus said when he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's talking about what we would call missions. Really, it's just the word of God. And so as we read that verse, the Lord opened and amplified a simpler way of looking at it. Instead of, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, actually, in asking around and checking with some scholars and so on, that it does no violence and probably is a little more accurate way to say it, I will declare for a decree what the Lord has said unto me. See, that's the difference in preaching about the gospel and getting down to the nitty-gritty of what God has said. And I want to just go to the heart of the matter this evening because I believe we have people that are hungry to hear a word from God. Again, I will declare for a decree what the Lord hath said to me. Now, as we look at this portion of God's word, remember we discussed in the previous service, Ezekiel 37, where God lifted Ezekiel up and put him in the deadest, driest situation a man could be in. And then God asked Ezekiel the question, can these bones live? Many bones, dry bones, dead bones. And Ezekiel probably replied like I would have replied, God, you're God. You have the answer to that. You know. And then God told Ezekiel what to do about it to change the many dry, dead bones, and that is to begin to prophesy and speak the word of the Lord. And I believe I'm really on to something because so many people are waiting for the next prophet to come through the land, not realizing that every day, and I know there's a casual conversation, there's conversations about your employment, and you know, I know the, some of the details of life, but it's amazing how much and how many times we prophesy every day. You say, but I'm not a prophet or I'm not a prophetess, but we prophesy because if the word is accurate and it is that the power of life and death is in the tongue, then what we say is important, very important. What we say is all important. How many believe Jesus wasted words? Certainly not. And when Jesus spoke in John chapter 18, he said, for this purpose and for this cause, I came into this world. He was not in idle conversation chatter. He was speaking out of his innermost being. This is why I was born and for this purpose, for this cause, I came into the world. And I believe there's some, something God's been dealing with me about and when God deals with me, I, I, I know in that particular type of, uh, of dealing that God's dealing with the body of Christ here at Calvary. You know, in boot camp, I remember years ago, a young man came back from training. And he said, I want to say something to this congregation. And he stood before the congregation. And the pastor was a little shocked because he was kind of one of those quiet folks. But he came back and he said, I knew nothing about what it took to be a soldier. But I have just come from basic training and said, we've learned that it's important what you say. It's important what you don't say. It's important to obey commands. And they drill this into us that as we flow as a team, we protect one another. But if on the front lines, all of a sudden you have two or three that jump up and freak out, then you give away the position of the whole camp and the whole platoon can be wiped out. You know, 
The word of God talks often. Paul talks about being a good soldier. And if there's one thing that a good soldier learns, it's that you live life on purpose, that your words count, what you say and what you don't say. We received a letter that uh, I want to read for this congregation from one of our young men, Calvary Academy graduates, just now graduating this week from the Marine Academy out in uh, San Diego, I believe it is. And I'm telling you, his letters indicate a 180 degree turnaround in his life. And I can see a spiritual intensity and there's a reaching out for the things of God. There's a seriousness about life because he's learning to be a good soldier, learning to be a good Marine. Now, as we look at us in this congregation right now, how can we raise the bar? How can I raise the bar? How can we all rise above Mr. and Miss average churchgoer, and how can we raise the bar and enter into that realm of stronger anointing, speaking the word and it comes to pass? There's a lot of people that need Jesus. There's a lot of people that need to be healed. There's a lot of hurt, bruised, and wounded people, even in the body of Christ, that need the word to heal their minds, their bodies, and their spirits. I never cease to be amazed while some are here just enjoying one of the greatest times of your life, there's some folks that did good to get here in any service. And they need every encouragement, every faith, every hope, every love incentive that comes from the Word of God. With that in mind, the expression is made, I will declare the decree or I will declare for a decree what the Lord has said unto me. Notice, he said, I will. That's your will. Our wills come into living for God. Our wills come into the things we do for God. When the opportunity came to go to Uganda, there was an I will on the part of Gary Everett and his wife. They said, we will go. It's almost unheard of as missions go today. In the average situation, it would have taken them two or three years to itinerate to try to raise the support. But Calvary Cathedral International stepped up to the plate and said, if you'll go, we'll send you. And in 12 days, they were on an airplane on their way to Kampala, Uganda. They said, I will. And God did the rest. I will what? I will declare for a decree. I will. What will I do? I will speak what God has spoken unto me. Not just coming out of the service or on the way home when I'm still in the flow and the river of emotion, but I will declare for a decree on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and yes, Sunday, what God has spoken unto me. When I feel good, when I don't feel good, when I'm encouraged, when I'm a little bit dis discouraged, when there's something there to, to just lift me up, or when there's seemingly everything to push us down. I will, I will do what? Declare for a decree what the Lord hath said unto me. I will, I will. You see, victory is a choice. Obedience is a choice. To walk by faith is a choice. You're saved by grace through faith, not of works lest any man should boast. It's a matter of your will to do the will of God. Now, there are two other verses that I would call your attention to, and that is in Job, the 22nd chapter, verse 28. Here again, we find similar, as far as I'm concerned, parallel truth. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. From Psalms chapter 2 verse 7, I will declare for a decree what the Lord has spoken unto me. And then from Job 22, 28, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. See, we begin to decree a thing, but we don't stay with it until it becomes established. You see, many times we, we speak a word, 
but we don't stay with it until it's established. You can go out and do all the site work on a lot or a piece of land. You can have all the numbers, all the dimensions, what you ought to do, what you can do, and what should be done. But that house will never be built until the plans are established and there is follow through. And how foolish it would be to drill the piers or to bulldoze the land and to lay a slab foundation and then do nothing from that point on. That comes under what Jesus said, count the cost before you start to build the tower. Investigate the Nehemiah principle. Go and check out and know and establish in your heart what really is there. If it's just a goose bump, if it's an emotion, if it's, if it's, if it's a good idea, or if it's a God idea. And then when it's established in your spirit, come back and start establishing the procedure. You see, that's where we've all missed it. I, there's been times I've missed it, missed it in that area. We started declaring something for a decree, but we did not establish it. We did not see it through. We declare for a decree. And then when we put the seed in the ground and it doesn't grow in a week, we think, well, I don't guess that works anyway. Church of the living God, the things that God has spoken to our hearts and decreed to our hearts, it's more than planting the seed. It's more than just watering on a good day. It's more than just staying with it for a few days. The things that have become so established and such a blessing and the things that God has established, the good side of the things that God has established in my life, I caught the vision, it became a cause and I stayed with it until it became established. I stayed with it until it became established. You stayed with it until it became established. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Now if you'd go with me to Romans the 8th chapter verse 31. Another insight to this very same truth. What shall we then say to these things? Now some of you say, what verse is that? Where is that found? I'll tell you why you might ask that because you haven't quoted that part of the verse. We all like to dwell on our favorite part of the verse or our favorite part of the chapter. But notice in Romans 8, 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? But that's not going to just stand on its own. What will you then say about these things? Well, I said it until I didn't feel it. I said it until I had opposition. I said it until it seemed like it wasn't going to work out. What shall we then say to these things in your life, my life, the church that we pastor, in our nation? What shall we say about this? What shall we say? Because what we say determines the rest of the verse if God be for us who can be against us? Now go with me to Mark the 11th chapter, if you will. Most of you know exactly where I'm going before I get there. And I tell you, this is just as much a part of God's word as any other part of the word of God. Mark chapter 11, verse 20, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. You remember Jesus cursed the fig tree. And Peter couldn't wait until they returned that way to see if it really happened. Peter was a curious sort of a guy. When you said something, he remembered what you said. He might not do something about it, but he remembered what you said. And as they were passing through, Peter runs up. He just cannot wait to see if, if this really meant what he thought he heard. As they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, and Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, <laughs> isn't that something? What do you know, Jesus? It really worked. <laughs> Master, behold the fig tree. Look, Jesus, it worked. The word worked. Look, Jesus, aren't you surprised? 
Master, behold the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. Now, you, you well know the truth that a tree doesn't die overnight. But I mean, this thing was cursed from the roots up. And I'm telling you, when they came by, that tree was dead. That tree was dead. It wasn't withered. It wasn't dying. It, it did not look ill. When they walked by the next time, the tree was dead. And that impressed Peter because he knows that trees do not die overnight. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Well, how do you have that faith and how do you exercise that faith? For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Whosoever shall say, we're talking about declaring for a decree. Whosoever shall say, say. Whosoever shall say. Whosoever shall speak words. Whosoever shall declare for a decree. Notice this. The Bible said, be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Folks, do you realize that there's no higher authority in the universe than Jesus Christ, the Son of God? And Jesus said, if you believe in your heart and speak with your mouth, believe with your heart. You know what some of us need to do? We need to just meditate that until that thing just explodes. Get past the goosebump. Get past the emotion of the moment. Just meditate on this verse. Meditate upon this verse. Think upon this verse. Think upon the mountains in your life. Choose the battles that you can win. Choose the battles that you're supposed to have something. Some people just want to fight every battle and fight everyone else's battle. I told someone this last week, I said, you need to stop trying to fight everyone else's battle. Everyone else's battle is not your business. We have enough to do without seeking extra causes. Know the cause that God wants you to be a part of. Know, know the mountain that God wants you to move. Know the project that God wants you to be involved. But whosoever shall saith, the word of God said it will come to pass. It will come to pass. So here we have four strong witnesses to what I'm talking about. I will declare the decree or I will declare for a decree what the Lord has said unto me from Psalms chapter 2 verse 7. Job chapter 22 verse 28, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Romans 8 31, the other side of the verse that we usually speak, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And then coming back one more time to Mark, the 11th chapter, Jesus answering unto them said, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, say with me, those things which he saith, think about it, those things which he saith, those things will come to pass. What has God said to you? What do you know that you know that you know that you know that God has said unto you? Don't let Satan steal your seed. Keep on believing. Not only declare for a decree, but stay with it until it becomes established. Stay with it until it becomes established. Like a songwriter, you get part of a song, but you don't have all the song. You stay with it until you get all the song. And you keep going over it and over it. And then you lose it, and then it comes back. And then it just begins, you know, you just stay with it until the whole song comes out. 
There's a beginning. There's a start. Sometimes just a word. Sometimes just a phrase. But a songwriter knows in his heart when a song is coming. And they stay with the song until the song is complete. Oh, when God gives you a seed thought. When God gives you a seed of faith. When God quicken something in you to begin to declare for a decree. Don't just do it one time and say that's it. But oh, declare the decree and stay with it and let the Spirit of God through the Word of God establish that thing in your spirit. I know I had our Christian school in my spirit several years before it manifested. It was impossible Totally impossible. We tried to do it in the first little piece of property we had and it just wouldn't pass any of the regulations. It was too small. We just didn't have enough to even start partially. But you see, God was putting a seed in my heart that one day we would have a property where we could begin to do what God called us to do. And then the Lord saw beyond something called a tornado and saw a day when it would not just be jammed into a, into a church piece of property as we still are until our new school is ready here in just a few months. But oh, God saw a new school that was coming. And so 24 years down the road, it's been a little while in coming. It's been a little while in coming. It's taken a little while to get there from here. But your seed that was planted and a desire and something we declared for a decree is no longer, we sure hope it's going to be, it is, and it's on its way to completion. And it will never be complete, it's just on its way to higher heights and deeper depths. Same thing with Calvary Cathedral Bible School, it was a deep desire of my heart, and it was so impossible, so I sowed seed in someone else's Bible school for almost three years. Made three round trips to Dallas a week in the midst of all the stuff we were going through at that time. Went to sleep at the wheel a couple of times coming back. Just a miracle of God. God took care of me. I look back and I don't see how I did what I did. And I didn't do it. It was God in me. It was Christ in me. But then the day came when we were able to begin our own Bible school. You see, we started into going out into the neighborhoods and and ministering years ago. We had that desire, but we didn't have the vehicle. And then God sent the Jesus hippie revival. And then after 13 weeks of that great move of God, then the young people said, we want to be part of a labor force that goes out to touch other children's lives before they get in the mess that we got into. And so now God raises up the labor force. At that time, it was a bus ministry. We had some 13 buses running all over the Metroplex. Fastest way to go to heaven is to be careless on the corner of the church where we were located. It was very cramped and very close. But you see, now God's even leading in an expanded way. I don't know all the ways that God's going to lead, but now we're still going out in the neighborhoods. We're still reaching people, just doing it in a little different way. The seed, the desire was planted. There was no outlet for it. But oh, you hold on to the desire and you hold on to the seed and you water the seed and you sow for the harvest and one day God brings the desires of your heart to pass. Don't let Satan steal your seed. Oh, don't kill the baby of desire and the baby of revelation. I love to tell this story. When we first went to Grenada, we saw a young lady, child of a prostitute, put in a brown paper sack under a house. Hopefully that would be the end of that. Yet somebody heard that cry. And thank God somebody did not ignore that brown paper sack they found under the house on the island of Grenada. And they, they found that sack and that little baby found its, its way to a home of a lady who had a very tender, very kind, very loving heart. And today that young lady has a university education and is working for God and is born again and spirit filled because somebody didn't throw out the baby. Somebody did not throw out the baby. Are you listening to me? Don't throw out the baby of the dreams and the desires and the cause that God has placed in your heart. It doesn't all happen overnight. Believe me, I can testify to that. Some people say, well, it's just wonder how every, wonderful how everything's over. No, it's not over. We're still working out a lot of things. We're not there yet. We're on the way. 
Some people don't realize the deep waters that we've come through. I've come through one of the greatest challenges of, of my life ministry in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've come through a time that we, we didn't need the wisdom of God. We had to have the wisdom of God. I mean 24-7, we had to have the wisdom of God. But oh, I'm here to tell you that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. That if you'll just continue to declare for a decree and continue to believe God and keep your faith out there and keep your seed in the ground and keep watering that seed, thank God the seeds that we've planted in this ministry, oh, it's a marvelous thing now. Most of us don't even have a clue what all God's doing through this house. I have to sit down myself sometimes and, and just say, God, show me, show me. Twice in the last few days, Pastor Robert Kine just called and said, Pastor Bob Nichols, and he was weeping on the phone. He said, you don't realize what Calvary Cathedral has done to change the nation of Uganda. We're not the only ones there. I know there's other ministries. There's other things that are happening. But oh, I mean, <laughs> Joyce Meyer just returned. She told me the other day as we were in a special occasion, she said, Uganda would have never known who Joyce Meyer was if it had not been for Lighthouse Television. Because of that television station, Joyce Meyer and several others that I could call their names that are here in the States, you talk about being partners, we're big time partners with some ministries. Hey man, a church that's relatively small in comparison to the millions of dollars of cash flow that come into many larger organizations and yet <laughs> they said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Bethlehem, you're just not big enough to cut it, baby. But oh, I tell you little as much when God is in it. And God takes nothing and makes something out of it. God takes that which is little and multiplies it over and over again. Don't let Satan steal your seed. Don't kill your baby. You know what I'm talking about. Thank God somebody heard that baby's cry. Somebody pulled that brown paper sack out from under the house. It's a miracle the child made it. Somebody gave that child tender loving care and gave them a home and provided an education and today She's living for God, born again, spirit filled. I'm telling you, child of the living God, listen to me. There's more to life than toys and things and thrills. We're making a difference in babies. We're making a difference in children. We're making a difference in youth. We're making a difference in young married cup. God through this house, making a difference. Well, let's summarize the things that we've been saying because it's very important. What has God told you? You know, one of the strongest things that I ever tell anyone who endeavors to do something for God, a lot of times it's a wish list. But when you know that 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 you know you've heard from God, I'm telling you, it gives you a boldness that's beyond description. What has God really told you? What would you stake your life on that God told me? I remember my grandmother. I thought she was a doting grandmother, spirit-filled Baptist. And I remember one occasion in her home just up the street from where we live, she said, Sonny, she said one day, she said, God's going to use you to spread the gospel in many different parts of the world. I mean, that was as foreign as anything could have possibly been. I remember my mother. I remember my mother before she went home to be with the Lord in 1990. She said, son, the glory is coming. The greater glory is coming. She said, I see the greater glory of God coming. And she said, hold steady. You're going to be a part of the greater glory of God that will be manifested in the earth. Dr. W.J. Lucas, a spirit-filled Methodist, that we held a revival for him. He was instrumental in my mother and my aunt and my grandmother actually receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Went to Austin, Texas to hold a meeting for him was there for three weeks. One day, we, he said, I want to talk with you. He's a little, little short man, bald-headed, and uh, full of life. His eyes just had fire and twinkle in them. He was 83 years of age, if I remember correctly, 83, 84 years of age. And he said, Bob Nichols, he said, my time is just about gone. But he said, there's going to be a move of God that's coming. In the, and this was several years ago. That's before I started the church. He said, there's a move of God that's coming to this land. And he said, you'll not only be a part of what comes to this land, but God's going to use you in many different parts of the world. And I mean, his face just lit up like television cameras were beamed upon his countenance.
Child of God, listen to me tonight. It's not just Bob Nichols. How many times have I said this is not the Bob Nichols show? I can't do anything without you as our partners and the other partners that God has given us. But I'm telling you, partners really do catch more fish. And what has God really told you? What has God really said to you? What do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God has spoken into your life? What do you know that God has spoken into your life? Secondly, write it down. Write it down according to Habakkuk 2 2. Write it down. Make it plain. Declare it for a decree. Declare it for a decree. Embrace it in your heart. And just keep doing what God told you last. I talk to people, they just they're just nervous and antsy. You got a word? I'm just looking for, if you're looking for a word, you'll get a word, but it'll probably be the wrong word. There's always somebody that'll give you a word, but not everybody that'll give you a word from God. I just kind of feel like this. When God wants me to know something, my antennas are up and my switch is on. I'm not going to try to force a word from anybody because I know I've been through good ideas and God ideas, and those good ideas will cost you money and time. But oh, I say to you tonight, keep the switch of faith turned on, church of the living God. Keep the switch of faith turned on. God is at work in this world. God is moving by his spirit. Declare for a decree what God has spoken unto you. And watch it come to pass. Watch it come to pass. Every word that God has spoken, God watches over his word to perform it. I know God's been dealing with me. You know, it, it is a challenge to watch your words. I said it is a challenge to watch your words. Is there anything yet that scares you to death? Do you catch yourself? Take care. No way. I just got to where I don't even answer to that one because it'd take too long to try to explain it to them. No, I'm not going to take care. No, nothing's going to scare me to death. I'm a believer. And so I'm going to speak and prophesy the word of God, the answer to dry, dead, many bones that are dry and dead is speak the word of God. Speak the word of God to your finances. Speak the word of God over your children. Speak the word of God over your grandchildren. Speak the word of God over your, your dreams and visions. Speak the word. Speak. I mean, it challenges you. You get up in your body. <laughs> my little grandson, Nicholas, woke up the other morning, told his mother, he said, Mommy, my, my stomach feels grouchy. Well, sometimes we wake up and our stomach feels grouchy. But when your stomach feels grouchy, speak the word. <laughs> oh, in the midst of every circumstance of life, please speak the word of God over this church. I speak prosperity over this house. I speak blessing over this house. I speak a harvest over this house. I speak breakthrough over this house. I speak that God is moving and working by his spirit.